Hey, welcome to episode 120 of the Brugaders, the League of Beer and Comics. We went back to the League of Beer and Comics specifically because David pointed out that like all our signage says League of Comics, you know, for when we go to the Comic Cons and stuff like that. And we're like, um, I'm fanning about with like retro looking 80s stuff because that's my jam. That was a shit intro. Sorry, Colin. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's only 120 episodes. You know, we would have yeah. thought you maybe would have got better at doing the intros, but but hey, but no. <laughs> I haven't. Um, in fairness, like when we were in the pub last week, um, I was kind of persuaded by you and Andrew to stop trying to do big song, big singing and dancing musical numbers, and because <laughs> none of them have ever worked. Yes, yeah. But one. <laughs> with those so uh, let's just keep it simple let's keep it beer and comics yeah so um with that in mind um uh, we just happen to have a guest who at the moment and, and i don't know em might know um a wee bit differently but at the moment i always thought we were pretty cool because we were the beer and comics folk you know because we did you know our whole podcast came together originally because uh, our local comic book shop and had a local beer shop move a couple of doors down, open up a couple of doors down. So we were like, well, we like beer, we like comics. Let's just do this whole comic and beer thing because no one else does it. So our guest this evening <laughs> uh, is M from Pints and Panels. Um, um, she is, uh, yeah, so P Pints and Panels is the artistic brainchild. I am completely stealing this intro off of uh, off the Pints and Panels website, so apologies. For not writing on intro, but Pints and Panels specialise in visual beer education, such as infographics and educational illustrations, as well as taking commissions for various other endeavours outside the realm of beer, so like family portraits and things like that. Um, Pints and Panels have been in the business since 2010, winning multiple awards such as the Wine Enthusiast 40 Under 40 in 20, 2006, 16, sorry, and third place for Best Beer Website in 2020 at the North American Guild of Beer Writers Awards. Pints and Panels is a trusted name in the beer, a trusted name in beer, and stands for quality, integrity, and honesty. So, like, like the Brugaders, but like infinitely better in every conceivably measurable way. <laughs> I think. So, <laughs> so, with that in mind, please welcome. Uh, she's shaking her head there because she's really nice. <laughs> uh, please welcome M from hey, the guys. states. Hey. Yes, yes, from New England. Oh. <laughs> Like actually, yeah. the APA place. <laughs> Wait, well, yeah, You're well, I, so yeah, the New England, yeah, Connecticut, which is <laughs> not actually, yeah, not Massachusetts. So not like it's not like a Simpsons. It's not like a Simpsons episode where he's like reading the map. Oh, there's like, a new. Oh, oh, there's a new, well, there's a new Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a new Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so New England uh, is it the New England that I'm thinking of that has like. The football team and stuff, the Patriots. Yeah, the Patriots. I'm not a Patriots fan, and I hate the Patriots. So okay. I'm a New York. So it, being in New England. So oh, I didn't know that we were going to talk about sports, but that's fine. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> um, so being from Connecticut, which is the southernmost state in New England, you kind of can choose whether you want to root for New York teams or New England teams. Mm. So I'm a weird case where I'm a Boston Red Sox baseball fan, but I'm a New York Giants American football fan. Uh, and that's actually quite common in Connecticut where you kind of split because I'm not rooting. I remember when I was, oh no, so I'm going to talk about sports a lot. I'm a huge sport, like where the Red Sox tickets go on sale tomorrow. I've got an alert on my phone. We well, go, my husband and I go to, we were at the wild card game last year where they beat the Yankees and it was the greatest day of my life. Uh, I told my husband that I said it was better than our wedding day. <laughs> um, I'm a huge, yeah. So, um, but yeah, so we're, yeah, Boston, Red Sox. I rem so my, my story was when I was a kid, I remember asking my dad why we weren't New England Patriots fans. And he was like, the Patriots are garbage. We're Giants fans. And I went, okay. Because <laughs> they were really bad back before the like whole Brady days. So We are, we are in a central Scotland and there's sort of bizarre, there's a soccer, football is the main sport here. And there's some sort of bizarre rules around who you should and shouldn't support. And um and a uh, but you know you usually get past things like yes you're uh, a it's kind of a similar way like what you know dad I live in Dunfermline why do we support the team from Kirkcaldy and it's like because Dunfermline's scum and you just have to like yeah that's it you're like, okay. really, yeah yeah there's really <laughs> no it's mostly geography but like my brother-in-law's a Miami Dolphins fan 
for for some reason. So like, yeah, it's just very, it, I, you know, the worst is when you meet a Yankees fan, that's also a Patriots fan. And you're like, are you okay? (laughs) Yeah. Are you like, who raised you? Like, are you all right? Like it's yeah. My sister's a Yankees fan and it's a struggle. So it's good to know that we we share these kind of, common bizarre rules about who you should and shouldn't support yeah that's yeah. that's good to know <laughs> i've got a friend that genuinely supports every team that's called celtic because obviously we we have glasgow celtic over here okay um, but then obviously he's a massive boston, boston Celtics fan yeah. as well i like and the Celtics. Just... yeah i root for all boston teams except the patriots then i'm a giants fan <laughs> but to be fair so the the patriots are an expansion team from the 60s so if you meet like older Bostonians, they're all Giants fans because that's who you rooted for before. So there's a, like a large contingent of Giants fans in like northern New England. So, but yeah, no, I was raised a Giant. Yeah, so Giants are terrible. They're garbage. So they're really bad. They haven't had a winning record since like 2017. So, but the so yeah. for, I, I just want to say if anybody's just joining us now, this is actually the the Brugaders beer. And yeah, yeah, we'll talk. We're going to yeah. talk, just we can talk about beer. And- you never met, I'm, sorry, Colin. I've just never met somebody from New England before. <laughs> the other thing I was going to say is over here, um, we um, we we had um, we, as I said, we we started our podcast when a beer shop opened up a couple of doors down from our local comic store store, and I think anybody that kind of has been with us for the, from the beginning or has kind of noticed, like I remember going in and being like not really knowing much about beer other than just I like beer. And um, I've discovered in the last what, 120 episodes that my fa- if you were to like pin me down and say what's your favorite kind of beer, I would say it's a New England IPA, you know, because um, they're awesome. So they're great, it's yeah. pretty cool that, that from somebody that's like there. It's know. it's cool to so when you order an IPA in New England where I'm from, it will be hazy. Like there's no like if it, I if you'll get if you order an IPA and it shows up and it's clear and bitter, you're like. It's it's a surprise, but I like that. I'm like, oh, look at this. <laughs> um, so anything in New England, and I like hazy IPAs a lot, uh, but I like all all beer. You know, like we're I'm not I don't like. We go to our local pub. I guess we it's not it's a dive it's a college dive bar down the street from my house, uh, and we drink like football glasses in the shape of a American football full of Miller Lite because it's four dollars uh, when they show games. It's great. <laughs> Uh, but I'll drink like anything. So then, because I love beer so much that like I don't really, you know. But I love New England IPAs. I think New England IPAs are there. It's nice to see New England get some recognition. We were, you know, everyone was talking about California, Oregon, mm, yeah, you know, Washington State. Um, you know, ten years ago they were driving trends, and now seeing New England because we were always a little behind, seeing New England drive trends is actually very exciting. So. And the beer is quite good. We have a really great beer scene, but there's good beer everywhere. I I went to Scotland in 2019. I had some great craft beer. So, yeah, it was it's sort of like that. That was definitely that was where we started, wasn't it? 2019, Colin. There yeah, definitely seemed did. to be a definitely seemed to be a yeah. We went from like not knowing any craft beer places to there being like six in a three or four mile radius. You know, like microbreweries that are putting out really nice beers. Um, I don't know. Like it's, it must be pretty cool. Um, I know coming from Scotland, a lot of folk talk about our uh, whiskey quite a lot. And as somebody that uh, I was hoping that you'd be like, oh yeah, I like New England IPA because I'm not a whiskey drinker. Colin is a wee bit more than I am. Would that would that be fair? That like, I know, oh, yeah. I know um, Andrew, our other co-host. He's not a massive whiskey guy either. And it's like folk are like, oh, you're from Scotland. You can get like all yeah, you've got yeah. access to all these different distilleries. It's like. Doesn't mean we go to them. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, yeah, you have some really good. Um, I'm trying to think of. I'm totally. I was like, oh, Scottish, all the beers I drank, and I'm totally drawing a blank now. I should have done a little research before I came on. To been like, um, what's? Um, I've never had it, but my friends the brewer at New Barns in Edinburgh. I've heard really good things. Um, gosh. Um, I'll Google it because um, Edinburgh at the moment, particularly, uh, not so much New Barns, but. Um, we're not too far away from. Is it um, new? They're called New Barns Brewery. Is that right? I believe so. Yeah. So the, yeah, they're based in they're based in Leith, which oh, um, Leith. Okay. Um, well, yeah, it's it's the New <laughs> Barns area of Leith, which is uh, just which is which is part of Edinburgh, but 
something like I sent. I actually sent a, a, a link to the Brugeners um, um, Facebook chat that we've got going because there's um something like sort of twelve microbreweries in uh, in Leith at the moment to the point wow. you can go and do, you can go and do a microbrewery crawl if you want to. You could like walk from one side of Leith to the other, and New Barns is one of those breweries that you would uh, you would go to. That's yeah. cool. That's awesome. Oh, we've got to check that out sometime. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, so um, <clears throat> to get uh, get on the pints and panels, um, I think I, I first come across pints and panels probably through a recommendation on on Twitter. Um, I, I it cropped up and I thought, oh, this is interesting. What what can this be? And then you know, as I clicked into it, I just saw lots of images that were about beer and about hops and you know and, and malt and everything. And um, I have to say that it became a an easy way of learning about beer, you know, as as we started to kind of talk more and try and try and get a bit more intelligent about our beer chat rather than, oh yeah, I really enjoy this one. Well, that's that's an interesting flavour, you know, as we tried to kind of swap up on things and, and, and learn a bit more about it. Pints and Pearls is certainly a, a fantastic resource for, for just that. Thank so, you, thank you. Well, I well really done. Um, and um fascinated to know how did that come about? Well, it's been a really long... So I started it in 2010. I was getting my master's degree at the Center for Cartoon Studies, which is a cartooning program in White River Junction, Vermont, which is a real place. Everyone always is like, cartooning school? And I'm like, no, no, it's real. I went there. <laughs> it has some really, like, uh, has some really famous alumni. Lucy Nisley, who's a really great cartoonist. Uh, Chuck Forsman, who's a couple of his mini comics have been turned into Netflix shows. And he got to go to the BAFTAs. Like, I'm like, like, I remember watching like Lakers, like basketball games with you and you're at the BAFTAs wearing a tux. Um, Sasha Fallor, who is a very famous drag queen who won RuPaul's Drag Race. I mean, it's the, she was a, uh, she was a couple grades below me. And it's just really cool to see all my cartooning friends go to the school. We all are in it together and seeing everyone kind of forge their own path. Um, the school also is in Vermont and uh, Vermont, craft beer scene especially around 2010 2011 was really really strong so i was going to breweries a lot drinking a lot of really great local craft beer that was really high quality so i started drawing pints and panels which was a review site so the first eight years of pints and panels was me being like i like this i don't like this um i don't really know what i have like i don't really know what i'm talking about and that's the fun part of it, like where you're like oh i like this but why uh no it's just good and that's totally fine like you don't have to explain yeah. yourself um when I, in 2018, I focused, I pivoted and was like, no, I want to start teaching people about beer using visual beer education. And that's when, or 2019 actually, so nine years later, and that's when it really, so I started focusing on, you know, what is a style? Um, what are hops? What's malt? Like what, you know, um, what's, a, how do you brew? What's the brew system like? And it's really great to see Pints and Panels get the recognition. Like people really write me all the time and they tell me how much they really like it. A lot of people from places where they don't speak English. So, you know, and they don't you know you don't need to speak English. You can look at the beer styles. Everything's very similar. Beer is a very great universal language. And yeah. so it's really, really fun to get. Um, Pints and Panels is really popular in Chile and Brazil. So that's been really cool to see. The South American beer scene also looks phenomenal. Mm. I got, yeah, I'm hoping to get to Brazil this year if the pandemic stops, which who knows. Well, um, I don't know if one of our regular viewers, um, Thomas, is here tonight, but Thomas Era is a, um, a, an artist who's in Argentina. So, you know, maybe paints and panels will expand into Argentina if he watches tonight or if he watches the recording. He's a normal comic artist as well. Like he's a, he is amazing. And uh, oh, I was thinking of, yeah, I think of Gustavo as well. Um Gustavo's well he's from Peru, but obviously he he um just um it's quite he lives he, 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 he lives in Leaf yeah. <laughs> but um <laughs> I actually forgot that. But um here here and we had him on a couple uh, a weeks ago and actually having him chat about you know, you're saying about the sort of South American beer scene, like, like it, it's amazing. It's like you say, it's a universal language. It's amazing just hearing, like, we got quite excited a couple of years ago about the scene on our doorstep. But what's also really smart about beer is, it's a, it's you know, it, you know, craft beer can happen anywhere and everywhere. And it's amazing hearing that scenes exist all over the world because it's, it's, it's 
it's really yeah. it's just really exciting so it's fun to get you know see the different styles of people beer is also incredibly regional so like in america i went to the one trip i've taken like in the past couple of years i went to montana so like the western part of america um, and they're obsessed with scotch ales and amber ales like dark yeah you'd yeah. go to a beer bar and it would be like they'd have three scotch ales on and they were lower alcohol usually like six and a half seven percent um and then yeah. they were like amber ales and blonde ales and it was like it felt like i went back in time to a, a <laughs> simpler simpler beer time and it was just really cool to see their scene and almost everyone has a different kind of in Connecticut, this is what we drink. In California, this is what they're drinking. Oregon, like everyone's scene is different. Um, but we're all making beer and we're all making beer well. So that's the most exciting thing. So, yeah. Interesting what you say about kind of going back in time because, uh, yes, certainly Scottish beer, well, the climate here is not good enough to, to grow hops in any kind of quantity. Um, so Scottish beer has always been very malty and it ten tends to be then quite sweet doesn't have the bitterness that you would normally get from hops or any of the kind of flavours that you would get from hops. So um, the Scotch ale here um, has been, you know, long established. Um, and then suddenly, I think it's taken a long time for actually craft beer um, to, to catch on a little bit because it's so different from what generations have been used to. Um, and... Um, I mean, there's in, in the UK we had the the campaign for real ale, which was you know yeah. an ongoing campaign for decades to to you know change beer for the better. Um, but now you know craft beer is everywhere, and as uh, Jeff said, you know we've got half a dozen micro breweries within just a few miles of where we live, and we've visited a few, and you know done the tours and um, tried every beer that they have. <laughs> <laughs> and their outputs, their outputs are incredible. Like when you, it, it, it's one of the, I don't know, it's like an odyssey, I think almost. Um, in that you kind of like, my, I, I, when we we have that conversation, and you get asked quite a lot. Um, I imagine you do quite a lot as well, where you get asked what your favorite beer is, and you're like, and you can't really answer it because you're like, well, I can tell you about a style I appreciate, mm -hmm. but then. I then have to then name about five or six breweries that do their own unique version of that style, mm. and then um, and then I often get asked like, what would, what's a local beer you would choose? And you're like, that's again another question because actually it depends what you want, and if you want a certain style, you know, I think if I mean calling it like you're like, if you're looking at New England IPA and and Fife, you've got Beef and you've got Cool. They're like two brewer breweries like. But then, if you want something that's like light and refreshing, you would kind of go to Inner Bay. And it's just, it's just, you know, what I mean, you kind of just like. But even then, like every every brewery is trying its best to cater for as many people as possible. So, like, it's such a difficult question to an ask, and it's so regionalized. It's um, it's pretty incredible to be honest. Yeah, yeah I I find that in America, since we don't really have pub culture, mm -hmm. um, the tap room and the tasting room has become kind of the pub. So we have yeah. two, we have in my town, so I live in a city of about 74,000 people and we have two breweries and they're quite good. But we actually, our favorite that my husband and I like is in the town over in uh, West Hartford called New Park. We actually went last night um, because they have a pizza oven. Their pizza is excellent, which is really, really good. Um, and they have, they've really diversified their, they used to brew a lot of, you know, like high alcohol stuff and a lot of sours, uh, which is fine, um, but they really push into lagers so their smoked hellas last night was excellent and they had an american brown ale and i was like yes i want that brown ale and a pizza and so we go there a fair amount um i, I it's just it's a nice gathering place a lot of them allowed you know a lot of them are kid friendly there's stuff for kids to do there's activities uh it depends on the town but town by town there's like you can are the brewery in my town is dog friendly so it's just full of dogs <laughs> Uh, you walk in and there's like 50 dogs. You're like, I'm going to pet you all. Um, but, but in fairness, that's how I am. My wife doesn't yeah. like beer. And that's how I will. That's how I often sell, like, going to old, like, we talk about the old man pub. And like, so also we have pub, we have pub culture in Scotland. Yeah. And then there's, a, I think there's an association with Camera, which is the, um, you know, the, what we're saying there, the, the campaign for um, um, 
making real ale like a better, more, uh, more obtainable and quality. And then you've got like, um, so, but all these places, like our favorite, um, our favorite, one of our favorite pubs is, is a camera pub, but it's also a dog friendly pub. So I, if, you know, I often like will turn around to my wife and be like, if we go to the commercial, there might be a dog, but at least. <laughs> and she's like, all right, you got me. <laughs> Yeah, and I want to say one of the things I really love about cat, um, about pints and panels, and, and and one of the things I think you've you've put up a few things recently. I really like when you when you pair things, um, yeah, because really, that, yeah, that, that's I, fun. I think and you, you talk, you alluded to that as well. Like, there's nothing I find like when you're out and you're having a couple of drinks and you're like you you, you then start to look for whatever establishment you're in's menu, and I know that there's like a you do pairing is like quite a, a key part of pints and panels, like what food goes with what beer. Um, I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I've been work is, working with, so like a lot of cultures, I don't know, they're like, they're, like I had a friend who's Australian, so he was like, I'll come up with all the foods because I've only been to Australia once, so I don't know, like I had a chicken parma, so I like, I know what that is, um, but there's a lot of other foods I don't know, so I've been, I've, I'm in talks with a Brazilian beer sommelier for he's going to come up with the food. And um, I'll do the beer pairings that I'm going to show him and he's going to, you know, thumbs up or whatnot. And so just so I can make sure that I get the food, I don't want to like go in and be like, this is Brazilian food. And I've been to one, there's a Brazilian steakhouse near my house that I've been to. That doesn't help <laughs> at all. Um, so that's a fun collaboration. The beer and chips one was a lot of fun to do. People really liked that one a lot. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's like as somebody that loves crisps. Wait, sorry, or chips. Are you fine? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that was that was one that got me quite excited. That's why I put it up. But um, uh, there was another one I really liked. Oh, well, this, this for anyone, this is paceandpanels.com. You had um, you had another one. I think you just posted it the other day. Uh, yeah, beer and spicy cuisine has a mm-hmm. as an affectionate adult curry. This was quite a, this was quite an eye opener for me as well. Um, yeah, a lot of yeah. people pair spicy stuff with hoppy. But I find that hoppy beers like American IPAs, uh, not New England IPAs, that's less bitter, but American IPAs or double IPAs are going to like make, they ex- they heighten spiciness. So if you like spicy foods, then go at it. But I I like spicy, but I always find that just like hoppiness plus like buffalo wings or curry, yeah, you're going to blow out your taste buds. So if you switch to something that's a little more sweeter, a little more fruity, it kind of helps. Plus... The Vindaloo and Dunkelweissen, Dunkel, Dunkelweissens and Hefeweissens have a higher carbonation, so they clean your mouth. I call it the mouth napkin. So essentially, like, wipes everything clean. Yeah. So it's will get rid of all the spicy stuff. So that's one of the reasons. I try to – I love contrast. I love salty sweet. So I find that I lean on that really hard when it comes to pairings because I just love sweet things and, and salty things. I think them together is the best, like – cheese and and like chocolate together is really good i'm a real weirdo though so uh, but that's just like those I kind like of like like that <laughs> like that hot hot chicken sandwich and the nipa would be great because the nipa is going to have a fruit forward aspect the sandwich is going to be really hot and spicy and it'll help um kind of quash keep the spiciness the way it is but quash the like heat um so that's been really fun to do I've, people have been coming up with really good suggestions i've talked with people who are you know, chefs or their their focus is certain food cultures. So I can help they can help me figure out best pairings because I don't again, I don't want to like go in and be like this and this. So but it's been fun to learn about food. I've been I just did beer and noodles. So I was learning a lot about like South Asian noodle cuisine and like stuff like that. It was really fascinating. And then it was like, oh that's how you and then looking up how you make it, um, talking with people who make it. And then figuring out the best beer flavors for that. Um, it's been a lot of fun. So there was one. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, there was another one I thought was really interesting. I'm trying to find it. Um, I think it might have been on your Twitter, but I'm assuming it's here. So there's always there's like people just need to spend. Uh, Pints panels is incredible. Um, I, I love um, the stuff about your uh, yeah. I love food. I love beer. So like that kind of mixing things together and. and I don't know. Do you often get people suggesting, like, do you, do you have people like talking to you about the pairings quite a lot? Sorry, like the idea that um. Yeah, some people are like, "Why did you do that?" Or they don't like it, which is fine. You're totally <laughs> allowed to have your opinion. Um, 
a lot of people are like, oh, when it, um, so Girl Scout cookies are really popular here in America. I don't know if you mm -hmm. have them over there. Um, so people have been like hounding me for girls. So I was like, fine, I'll buy Girl Scout cookies. So I just bought a bunch from my uh, a friend of a friend's kids. Um, and so we'll do that. Uh, people have been asking that for a while. The cookies aren't going to be here till March, though. So I just paired the Winter Olympics with dark loggers because the Olympics start oh, next yeah, week. Nice. So I was like, sure, dark. And I, I, so I, well, I started pairing it, and then I realized I had chosen all dark loggers. I was like, oh, okay, we're going to go all dark loggers. I love dark loggers. My favorite beer styles are like Munich Dunkels, Schwartz beers, uh, Chuck dark loggers. I don't really know why. I just really like them. Um, but yeah, so those are really fun. Countries are quite good at the Winter Olympics, though. So that kind of that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that is. Yeah, the Germans, the Czechs. Yeah, any Alpine <laughs> or any snow country. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll just, I, yeah, like anybody that you know, you maybe need to put some time away to do it. But anyone, can, you know, you can go and pick the pints dot com. You can find so much. The one of the other ones I wanted to, before we kind of moved on to like what you're working on now and things like that, and and what your plans are for the future. Um, we have a we had Emily Tassin uh, on our podcast. We've had her on twice actually, and she's a, she's an advocate. I don't know if you know her actually. Um, yeah, she's a, she's an awesome she's an awesome uh, woman who's um, working really hard to like promote gender equality and and create safe spaces for 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 everyone to enjoy um, beer uh, in what's you know historically been quite a you know a male dominated society. Um, what she's done beer she's done beer pairing events in in edinburgh um around sweets in the last year or two and that's not like um i'm a i'm a sweet beer with a savory food item or um and I, actually one i hadn't considered until um i i, I found out at pints and panels was mixing a uh, nipas with slightly sweeter stuff so like i love uh i'm vegetarian so i don't eat ham and pineapple pizzas but pineapple pizzas with a wee bit of chili is like my favorite pizza mm. that with a that with a nipa is incredible and I must thank you and help like helping me discover my one of my favorite beer styles goes so well with one of my favorite food items. But um, I do I do like that beer with sweets is something that I don't think most people really talk about. So it was one thing I wanted to bring up because uh, I think am I right in thinking you did one about sort of more cakes and stuff on Twitter? Yeah, there was I haven't posted it on Instagram or on my website yet, but yeah, there I have a beer and pie one coming out. Uh, sweet pies not savory pies um i've got yeah cake candy there's a desserts one just like straight desserts um the candy one was really fun to do because there's so many different flavors beer actually is a really great dessert on its own especially like higher alcohol again imperial stout is a great dessert uh yeah. or sours like a flanders red a lambic mm -hmm. uh with beer those are really not well with beer is not sour but um or it can be but those are really great beers to drink after barley wine um, those kind of uh, they're a great dessert on its own and they work really really well because of the chocolate and the coffee and the fruit flavors in beer work really well with sweets so I really liked I tried to come up with since candy is so different across the world I tried to pick I know a lot of like I know I don't you guys don't have like Milky Way or Skittles but um oh, yeah. but uh yeah, but um, like Kit Kat, I think Kit Kat's probably like the world, like the world's most loved. Because I don't like Kit Kat. No, really. I think yeah, I, I read somewhere that Twixes were the most popular. Twix, are, one Twix is my see Twix is first because Twix is my favorite candy. Yeah, I love. Are. Yeah, they are the best. I have a friend in Glasgow, and she sent me because you guys have different um, Twix flavors than we do. Yeah, in America. The, white, the, white the white chocolate Twix. The is. white. We have that. She sent me the like winter spice ones. We don't have Ooh. those. Ooh, I've got um, sort of caramel as well. Do you have sort of caramel Twix? No, we don't. We have it's. We have peanut butter, which you guys don't get. Mm -hmm. uh, we have regular. There's a couple other. I think yeah. the white chocolate ones. I'm not sure if we get. Um, they're branching out more, but Twix is. But it's. It's the it's the superior candy. I mean, it is amazing. <laughs> we, we, we did get the, the the peanut butter one just very briefly. Just yeah. before Christmas, I made a, a sort of special appearance because I thought it, because the the packaging was a bit different. I thought it was Reese's, and I saw the the you know peanut butter, and I almost bought it because my wife loves Reese's. Um, in fact, you know, it's, it's we've been able to get Reese's here for a long time now. But um, I remember being in in the states with my work about I don't know ten fifteen years ago, 
and my wife says, bring me back Reese's. Because, <laughs> you know, at that time we didn't get it. But, but yeah, we, we did get the, uh, the the Twix peanut butter. Oh, um, good. well, that's good. Yeah. I was supposed to have yeah. um, a friend from Canada. He and I were supposed to have dinner together yesterday, but he, his, he had business to take care of. And he had brought me Smarties. We don't have chocolate Smarties in America. Oh. And I yeah. love chocolate Smarties. Um, so I was really bummed I didn't get to see him. Not, be, I mean, because I wanted to see him. He's a friend, but I also really wanted those, <laughs> those Smarties. I want my bloody candy. <laughs> yeah, I want my chocolate Smarties. We don't have those. That or Aero bars. I remember I had a, a friend. My mom had a friend who was British, and they would, she would go home to visit a couple of times a year. And every time she came back, she'd bring me like a mint Aero bar and Smarties. And like, um, oh gosh, there's some caramel, like just like a regular caramel. Like we don't, we kind of have those, but not really. Mm. Um, most of the candy we have is either like, it's pretty Hershey heavy. So, which mm. I know that you guys don't have. So, but yeah, it's, oh man. I, I, find, I find it quite funny because we, um, yeah, there, there, there was, I believe, I, I don't know if this is true. You know, sometimes when you were younger and like folk told you things that, you know, were maybe true or not true, but because we didn't have Google, we couldn't really <laughs> check it out properly. But I sort of remember being told that there was some sort of legal embargo between Cadbury's in the UK and Hershey's in the US. And you weren't, allowed, that's why we didn't have Hershey's for so long. And that's why uh, Cadbury's were kind of a rare, I don't know if that's true, but then about five or six years ago-ish, I remember, like, we got all, we none of them are around anymore, but we had, like, American candy shops for a while, and they were called, like, Americandy or things like that, and it was, it, you could go there and get Hershey bars or, like, like the Willy Wonka dweebs and... Oh, the, yeah, the nerds. Yeah. 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 We, ha yeah, we have, we have yeah. Smarties, but they're a different candy. They're, they're sour, and they come in, like, a clear tube. Um, okay. They're not chocolate. So I remember... <laughs> Going to Canada as a kid and seeing chocolate smarties and being like, "What the heck is this?" It gave, like boggles my mind. They're so good though. I have a, I have a real sweet tooth, so making this, um, making this infographic <laughs> was a lot of. I was like, "Oh, twig!" Like it's just, they're yeah. It, ah, I love candy so much. I miss going to uh, yeah. I want to go to the UK and eat all your candy. You guys have way better candy than uh, than we, 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 heard, we, yeah. we often talk about. Uh, we often talk about um, gateway beers. And um, what I think is quite amazing about uh, Pints and Panels is, is you've kind of, with, with these idea, idea parents, you've kind of moved it the other way. So it's like, we often like, again, um, we, 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 we haven't done them since the what, yeah, COVID, but we had two or three um, events where we kind of like, folk came and met me and Colin and we went for, um, we went for like a pub crawl. And uh, sometimes like friends would show up who weren't really into beer, but were just looking for a night out. And then they'd be like, Okay, I want to do the beer and I want to do the beer thing because I'm with you. What do you suggest? And you're like, so you kind of go for gateway. So I'm like, oh, well, this has got low alcohol or this, you know, um, we've got a brewery in the UK called Tiny Rebel. I don't know if you've managed to um, acquire them over there, um, but I think they're they're kind of up and coming. But they they go out their way to make the beers as kind of strange as possible. So they will put like. They're, they've got um is it stay puffed is the, is their sort of one of their signature beers and it's a toasted marshmallow porter mm -hmm. um, with the the stay puffed marshmallow man on the can and stuff like that um and uh, that's kind of like one of my do you want to try something strange beers like here's a you know here's a here's a does and then we've got we've got a brewery over here called dessert in the can and their whole thing is to do porters mixed with what I love about uh, what I love about pints and panels and, and like your pairing is like you're not you're not going for strange beers or something you're just going right here's a beer style try it with this food and mm -hmm. see what you think you know and, and and make it more social which is not something i thought about and when i saw you i was just like <laughs> 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 yeah it's easy to make beer so like once the what i do with people who are new to beer is i ask them what kind of flavors they like like not what beer you like because they're like i don't like beer and i'm like you're thinking of probably you know, a light lager or something you had mm. when you were in college and it was gross and it was probably in an old keg and it was bad and that's fine. Um, mm. And I actually learned this from a, I was at a tequila bar and I don't, I was like, I don't like tequila. And he was like, ah, you don't like the tequila you had at, you know, yeah. in a lot of qualities in college. And I was like, that's fair. And 
he was like, let's talk about flavors. And he walked me through different flavors of tequila. And it like opened my mind that like, wow, tequila is more than just this style. And so if you get people to like, do you like, you know, lemonade, sodas, chocolate, mm -hmm. coffee, and that's how you kind of break out the flavors of the things that they like. And if you can kind of, I, I, my, I, I was at Thanksgiving with my aunt and she was like, I don't like sours. And I was like, Aunt Nancy, do you like like lemonade? And she's like, well, yeah, of course. And I was like, this beer is just essentially lemonade. It's just carbonated, it has alcohol in it. And if you kind of put that thought in your head and then she drank it and she was like, this is amazing. And I'm like, yes. So like, if you can kind of train your brain to think about certain flavors before you try it, it's actually quite helpful to get people to try things they don't want. Uh, or they don't think they want, rather. So that's how I kind of approach beer. So like I do beer flavor simple. So it's a picture of the beer style. And then there's like four, you know, what what does the a stout taste like? You're going to get molasses. You're going to get coffee. You're going to get chocolate. Um, and if there's, it's kind of a picture and it gets people thinking about, oh, what, you know, oh, I like coffee. Maybe I should tr try this. Maybe I'll like it. I want to put one, my, my, uh, the American stout one. Um, I love stouts, um, but your American stout. I like that you said. Uh, I like how you're saying like you 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 talk about flavors and things like that. But I also love when when and uh, obviously it's the it's your art style. It's also just the sort of um, the the emotive aspects of life, including beer culture. But um, I like that like your American stout, where you're like you you know like you know. You 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 talk you would talk about flavors, I imagine, but you're and you're also just bringing an idea like you know, do you want a beer that like reminds you of petting a cat and bird watching? I love it. It's so it's like it's so amazing. Um, I, just, I can kind of scroll up because there's the, all this stuff. Like, yeah, I wish I'd discovered paints and panels before we started this podcast because it's like and like Colin says, it's it's looking at stuff and like. It's been able to. It's been able to be more emotive and being able to be more just dis discursive, with like, you know, with, you know, like I, I'm like drinking an a Nipah and being like, this is really good. The, the, and I, I remember the first time we had a mosaic beer on the podcast. And I couldn't really explain it, but then you're like, you know, if I, I've had had this panel here, was able, <laughs> or or had had been to um, the M school of drinking beer, I'd be able to go, oh well, like you know. It's got um, it's a medium to high alpha acid. Um, it's all about the aroma as well as the flavor, you know. And um, it's you know, I'll just just the, the knowledge as well as the sort of the you know, it's obviously what's so amazing about the art. Your your art form as a medium is just yeah, it's great. And every, just, yeah, and everything's free on my website. So there's a visual archive, the educational archive that you can go to. And everything's free. So if you're wanting to learn about beer or if you're taking like a, um, a class about beer and you want to learn more, all of this stuff is available for free because I just want people to have access to good beer knowledge that's also accurate. Um, I want to make sure that because there's – I've Googled stuff where I'm like, what's the difference between an ale and a lager? And the things that show up on Google are all wrong. And you're like, oh, gosh, this is teaching generations of beer people the wrong information, which is incredibly stressful. So – I'm trying to make sure that everything that I do is accurate um, and yeah, that's, and it's free. So it's accessible. It's like black IPAs are about movies and laughter and that's great. It's just really good. Um, you should be really proud. I say it's, it's, it's Thank amazing. I, 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 love, I love just the idea of matching emotion and flavor and just the whole, the whole experience instead of just like opening a can and, and going for it, you know, um, what a, What's the plan going forward? What have you got coming up in 2022? Uh, more comics, more infographics, because people really like those. So I'm getting a lot of work on that. Uh, I do a lot of freelance stuff. So I work, I do monthly comics for Vine Pair out of New York. I do, uh, it's kind of like a whimsical, it looks like a kid's book. Uh, it's based on, there's a kid's book I grew up on because uh, I'm a child of the late 80s, early 90s called The Magic School Bus. <laughs> um which is like about the magic school bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah, okay. I didn't know if that crossed the uh, the pond. Yeah, it did. So it's based yeah. on yeah, it's based on the magic school bus, but it's Ale Academy, and they learn about different. I just drew. They all went to uh, the Russian Imperial Court to learn about why Imperial Stouts are called Russian Imperial Stouts. Uh, yeah. 
so yeah, and it's a bunch of students and they all like learn about beer and there's just like a teach, yeah, there's a Miss Frizzle type teacher called Dr. Clerk and um, yeah, and it's, it's fun. So I've been doing that for about a couple of, about six months now. And then I do a monthly comic for Pellicle based in the UK about brewery cats called the adventures of Nelson and Goldie. And they go on travels together uh, and they're fun. So I've been doing that for two and a half years and then just doing a lot of commissions. I've just started doing more beer labels. So I just did a beer label for a brewery in Washington state on the West coast in America. I did a brew label for a brewery up in upstate New York. So Western upstate New York. Um, there's always something new. I do a lot of library talks, like local library talks. So like yeah. virtual. So I'm here in my office yeah. and I talk about beer and cheese or I talk about, I'm doing a talk about um, women's history and women in the beer world from ancient times to now. Um, I do talk about world beer styles and it's all illustrated. So it's just like a big PowerPoint presentation and people come. I used to do them live you know in person but obviously we can't do those at the moment so and then beer judging i'm hopefully judging in mexico in june so that'll be my first international trip since i went to scotland in 2019 um so that'll be fun and i you know there's a lot going on there's always something to do i have a huge list and then like working on other stuff so if i have nothing pressing i've been trying to get done i do a visual Cicerone syllabus. So I've done levels one and two, but I've never done three and four. So I'm working on that. Part one is done. I'm editing part two now. So out of five parts. So there's always something to work on, always something to draw. So I keep myself quite busy. So it's, it's, it's so much fun to, you know, go on social media, post, teach people about beer, uh, and the response has been really, really positive. So everyone's, I'm, I'm very pleased with how it's going, and I'm really glad that Pints and Panels is being successful. Yeah, super, superb. Talking about being busy, you've you've got something else coming up shortly. Um, today you're doing something over on Instagram. Is that right? Do you, do you want to tell people about? About oh, what? so yeah, every usually it used to be Wednesdays and now it's Thursdays um, at five o'clock Eastern. So I think 10, that'd be 10 o'clock for you all. Um, yeah, it is, yeah, so I mean, my time zones are always not great. Um, I do a 15 minute, uh, it's called a quick drink. And so I'm just here in my office. Um, I put my computer or my, I put my phone on a little tripod and I just talk about beer for 15 minutes, usually a beer style. Sometimes it's uh, draft quality. Um, I did a really great talk about like positivity in beer and how it's important to like, you know, say what you really think, but at the same time, you know, keep it positive. There's a, a lot of great beer we should be celebrating. There's, yeah, I've talked about numbers. I've done about 40, 30. I, usually, I try to do it every week. Sometimes things get in the way and I can't. Um, but it's really fun and they're live, but then I always post them afterwards on Instagram. So you can watch, there's a series, you can go to my Instagram at pints and panels.com or pints and panels rather and watch them all. Um, and they're usually off the cuff. I will do research, you know, and make sure I know what I'm talking about, but they're usually off the cuff and quite silly. Uh, and they're usually around five where I haven't eaten since lunch. So I get a little, <laughs> <laughs> there was, well, I'm, the barrel aging one was quite, uh, by the end, I was like, uh, I got to go. <laughs> I think the beer was 13.5%. So I am drinking Scotch Ales today. The Scotch Ale is Bell's. Bell's makes a really great Scotch Ale for Christmas, their Christmas ale. So I still have a bottle of that. I think that's seven or six and a half. So that should be fine. Um, I'm a real, yeah, I'm a real lightweight when it comes to It's sensible for, for us, though. You brought, a, you brought a beer out. I did. I drank a... First Ride. This is uh, Athletic Brewing Company. They're a non-alcoholic beer. As I get, well, I have to beer. maximize it so you can show us the can. Oh yeah. Yeah. Here. As I get beer all over my computer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, that's all right. So there's the. It's a little dented. Um, but they are based in Connecticut, where I live. It's actually a. Um, is one of the. It's one of the people who founded it. Is a guy. I call him Billy because I went to nursery school with him. Is named Bill. Bill Schufelt. Um he and I went to school together and graduated together um, high school. And then he started, he stopped drinking, started uh, an NA brewery. That's it's one of the largest, almost one of the largest craft breweries in the country now. Uh, and it's worldwide. Yeah. So he just moved into a new space in Milford, which is about an hour from my house. 
And then he has a huge brewery in uh, San Diego. So they have two locations, um, a lot of money behind them and a lot, but the product is excellent. And that coffee porter I had did tasted like beer, you know, so they're doing it and it's been really awesome to see them grow. Um, and it's also great to have, you know, like a good non-alcoholic option, especially when like you're out drinking and you want to have a beer or they're really great with lunch. I really, cause he'll, he'll send me, he's like, here, try this, you know, and they make all manners. They just came out with a Dunkelweizen. They make all manner of NA styles. And so I really like having them at like lunch or if, you know, you want another beer and you're watching a sports and you're like, oh, I've already had like two, let's, you know, take a break, but I want another one because I'm a real lightweight. So I'm, 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 I've talked constantly about how much I love their beer because I'm just a huge fan of good, good non-alcoholic beer. It's cool to see beer sh go into um, like, you know, go into those kind of spaces and make really great product. I was just having a look on there. They have a UK shop, obviously. You know, yeah, if you're cool. one of our, if you're one of our US listeners or viewers, absolutely, you know, check check them out there. But you, you, they have a UK shop, which um, includes a, a dry January pack. So I don't. Do you guys do dry January? Is that kind of a international? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, yeah. I've I've only done it once, and it was because a doctor told me I can't, I couldn't drink for. <laughs> it was an elimination <laughs> thing, so I couldn't drink for three months so i did dry january my husband did it with me you did it once you did it once i did it once and i was like course. you know what i like uh i like i like moderation like one beer a day you know maybe two depending like keep it i think moderation that's my thing you know if people like to do dry january or don't want to do it that's totally their business um but yeah they do but athletic really good we get a lot i get a lot of uh, sponsored content from them on social media about their dry january stuff but their beard their sours are great the dark beers are great. They do their IPA is excellent. They do a hazy IPA. So it's just good. It's just really good stuff. I'm just really proud of, I'm just really proud of, you know, when like your friend does really well and you're like, yeah. And he's just such a nice guy too. So you're like, you did it. <laughs> it's great. I feel like that, but Colin. You're right. Yeah, I'm proud of you, man. So uh, in, in sort of Scottish comics, Colin, Colin's doing really good things. And it's really smart to see him do them. Um, it is cool what you say to me. Go on, man. Yeah, you did it. Uh, Yay. <laughs> uh, one thing I wanted to say about the, what I think is pretty cool about the dry January pack that Athletic Brewing do, presumably they do it internationally, you can buy a, 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 you get a disposable camera as part of like, you know, the ones that you, like, obviously we all oh, have the that's ones cool. that you do like, you know, like, you have to do the thing to like click between photos and you have to click and then you can. So, yeah. I love I'm all I love the gimmicks like <laughs> I love the I love the, I love the when you buy beer it happens in that's why I think I love comic one of the things I love about comics when you do a comic convention you buy the comic but they also give you a sticker and a badge yeah. and uh, I know Mark Abnett did a uh, one of our friends Mark he um he's from uh, he's from New Zealand so as part of his comic pack he was giving away um beer coolers so he, you know the, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. they were like like. Anyway, and that's there's only three or four folk that really appreciated that, but <laughs> we really appreciate it. So, <laughs> um, no, that's amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, of course, thank you so much for having me. This was great. It, I didn't really get to talk about the comics portion, but I will say I wanted to say I'm, my knowledge of comics is not great. So, I mean, I'm I'm I grew up. Actually, I want. I mean, when I was seventeen, I read Watchmen. And that blew my mind. So there was, and I like, my friend gave me a copy of it. I was trying to think of, I never get to talk about comics. So it's mm -hmm. always when I like see my cartooning friends from school or like are on a Zoom call with someone who knows comics. I'm like, let's talk about comics. Cause I, but I don't really like know the current scene. And so it's, I need to get back into it just cause it's, it's such its own world. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. And I, I'm kind of out of that. I don't go to, cons i don't go to the small press stuff so but it's still it's just really i just i'm so proud of like how the comic world is so it's also so loved now like kids yeah. kids read it like diary of a wimpy kid like that guy was just at a comic-con tabling yeah. Yeah. and like now he's a billionaire and owns his own farm or whatever like that's the cool it you know and the kids yeah. are you know kids get to read it everyone appreciates it and it's just cool to see how graphic art have progressed it makes me really really happy so, yeah 
you should also not you should also not really care if you don't know comics and that that well. Like I think um often like obviously we, 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 we bring on guests from the comic and beer world. You know, sometimes there's like I know we have we have a guest who happens to have like an encyclopedic knowledge of both, which is always oh. good fun. But it's always nice, like particularly if you've got if we've got like a comic a comic guest who doesn't know too much about you know, somebody that we've we brought on the, the onto the podcast because we were a fan of their comic work. And and they want to 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 they want to learn about beer, so they've maybe done a wee bit of homework for coming on the show. But then vice versa, it's nice. Like so, like Watchmen, like it, it's quite funny. I find it quite amusing, but also really cool that you're like I don't know much about comics, but I read Watchmen. When I, was I read Watchmen, when I, yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah, that's like. <laughs> and then when I went to comic book school, obviously they like you know you read the classics, the Mouse. Um, mm. You read. I'm trying to think, but then you also read. Um, my favorite, everyone's because a lot of people are like, oh, you're a cartoonist. What's your favorite cart- like a uh, graphic novel? And mine's um, Dash Shaw's Bottomless Belly Button. Have you ever read that one? Little. That's a, yeah, yeah. One, but, uh, it's like this yeah. and thick, and it's like he wrote it when he was 24, and it's got such maturity and depth. But then like the son's a frog, and you're like, oh my gosh, it was like it was. And I met Dash Shaw. I watched the Garfield Halloween special with him at. Because he was a visiting artist, <laughs> and he was like, "Let's hang out and watch TV." And I'm like, "Yeah, all right." Person who wrote my favorite graphic novel ever. That was the cool part about going to CCS was like, yeah. you know, um, Seth shows up in his yeah. like suit and like it's all like small print, like you know, the kind of the artsy type. You know, we did mm. the DC Marvel world doesn't really show up. I mean, Stephen yeah. Bissett, who wrote Swamp Thing, was my teacher. He wrote the blurb for my first book. He's the nicest, most like champion. He loves everything. Yes, um, yeah, so I have some of his stuff, but I never get to read um, or like get into like current cartooning scene. I kind of I miss it. Uh, I follow John Porcelino on Twitter, and I always like to see what he's up to because he's a he's an oddball. <laughs> I like comic. I like cartoonists who don't draw well. You know what I mean? Like I mean, like he's a very good artist, and he has his own style. Um, so like that, the Jeffrey Browns, that kind of stuff. But I really like, as I feel like I can't really draw. There's a lot of things I can't draw. I can't draw a couch. I can't draw side profiles. <laughs> <laughs> I there's a lot of stuff. And you have to kind of play to what you can do. And I really like cartoonists like John Porcelino, like Jeffrey Brown. Like there's a bunch of them that kind of yeah. play to their like limitations. Yeah. And I really like that about... Um, Sorry, yeah. I mean, it's how I mean. I got into CCS, and I was like, "How? I'm not a good artist." And it's it doesn't really matter about the art. It really matters about like the story you tell, and mm-hmm. your style. And if you have yeah. both, yeah, that's really okay. I like, yeah, that's all right. No, so I need I need to <laughs> I, I need to set you down in front of my 14 year old son because that's a debate we're having in our household at the moment. Is that whole like he he's sitting in his National Four art class, looking at his friend's work and being like. They're better artists than me, and I was like, "But you're not being judged on your art; you're being judged on your ability to be, you know, demonstrate your style." Um, and it's um, absolutely, Colm. Uh, it's interesting that you were saying about the couch and the side profile, because um, Colm, what do you find hard to draw? Because I know Colin's a comic artist as well. What, what do you, what? I drew everything. Yeah. Horses. <laughs> Every, Can you draw a horse? Horses he, are. Well, I am pretty good at horses, I have to say, okay. because almost every comic I've ever drawn has had a horse in it. Oh, well, um, then there you go. I started <laughs> off doing kind of medieval history stories, so there were tons of horses. And then I did a, a, a World War Two art, you know, aircraft uh, book. I still managed to get a horse in there. <laughs> um, a- I, you were talking about cartoonists and stuff. Um, somebody we had, a guest that we had in the show was a Scottish artist called... Um, Alan Henderson and and he does a, a series called the the Penned Gwyn. Um, you should check it out. He's on Instagram. He's on Twitter. Penned Gwyn. It's all penguins. Um, and oh. it's just like you know three panel strips daily, and they're all just kind of you know silly jokes and puns and things. You should go and check him out. And he he's got a you know very simple kind of art style. He does these penguins that all kind of look the same. But occasionally, you know, you introduce an odd animal or something. Um, check him out because, uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll you'll I enjoy. I will. Thank you. Awesome. So, um, if people want to check it out, obviously, um, I've got you at Paints and Panels. Is I'm right in thinking that's that's 
your handle or is that a, is that called a handle is that thing called yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, a handle yeah down with the kids man um, is that a, is that is that we you know is that that's your twitter handle is that the same okay. as on, on instagram and that as well and yep yeah facebook instagram it's across the all the social media channels um at, at pints and panels so you'll be able Amazing. to find and then pints and panels.com is my website where you can find all my work available for free there's a shop uh, i do commissions so if you want like i did a lot of christmas cards uh which was uh really stressful because i have an intake form now that you have to fill out because people were really like i wouldn't wear that oh, shirt and i'm like i had no idea I, I don't know you i don't know what you so i now i'm like sitting or standing what color is your hair what shirt do you want to wear <laughs> how is the order are you like what you want in the background so there's like a huge intake form people fill out now um so so i get it right uh because everything is um pen and ink so i draw everything's hand drawn it's not mm -hmm. done on computer the 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 coloring is uh, done in Photoshop, but not the um, line work. So if you know if I mess up or you want something changed, I got to draw it again. So I make sure that now when I do commissions, you have to fill out a pretty exhausting uh, intake form. <laughs> um, so because I yeah, it's there are a lot I've drawn people's like the homes they grew up in. I love that's my new favorite thing is architecture. It's terrifying Ooh. to draw. Um, but I love it. It's so much like to draw people's favorite restaurant or the restaurant I work at or, you know, the building I grew up in. Um, it's I always get freaked out about drawing them, but they always end up. I'm always very proud of how they turn out. It's really fun to draw architecture, which is is something that's quite hard to do, um, yeah. especially at, at angles. I'm always just like I need a front end. I want a front shot because I'm not yeah. going to I'm not uh, I don't perspective and my style don't really go. Uh, we're together. <laughs> a little too simple for that so but yeah it's been really fun to see what people want drawn it's quite reasonable and then ten dollars from every commission goes to beer culture which is a u.s based uh, nonprofit that does um what do they do they do like a job board for people of color to get into the industry they do oh, cool. uh, they do scholarships they do a lot of really cool stuff they're awesome they're based in florida so yeah. i've yeah last year just the commissions alone i got to donate over a thousand dollars to them which was really cool oh, yeah that's amazing oh good job yeah yeah no i was i don't yeah they're just really nice people and they're trying to you know make beard the beer world better better so yeah it's really cool to see what they've done so I'd like to help them out in any way possible. So I've partnered with them for a few years now. Excellent. We're well, so I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Oh. So, um, yeah, feel free to hang around. Or I know you said about an hour, and I'm cautious that it's 57 and a half minutes. Oh, yeah, guess. it is 50. So, yeah, I actually, I do need yeah. to, I need you to go because I need cool. to get ready for my talk at five for Scotch Ales. I also need to put another, we have a wood burning stove, and I need to put another log on the fire. It's quite <laughs> chilly. Fair. It's quite true here. But it's, it's zero. It's zero. And we had oh. snow this morning, so oh, okay. um, yeah, cool. or zero, well, zero, that. zero centigrade, not zero Fahrenheit. Um, or zero, sorry, zero Fahrenheit. No, zero centigrade. Oh gosh, yeah. this beer was not alcoholic. Well, what, they're, they're both pretty cold. It's fine. You yeah, can... it's cold. It's, it's like cold. negative. Yeah, negative one C. There we go. Um, yeah. So yeah, and then. Yeah. So, but thank you so much for having me yeah, on. Thanks, this thanks was a lot of fun. Yeah, and, uh, of course. Yeah. Cheers. Awesome. Yeah. We'll see you soon. All right. See bye. you guys later. All right. Okay. Bye. Awesome. Smith drink. That was now. Nah, that was amazing. Um. So yeah. Uh, did you read anything this week that you wanted to kind of chat about? I've been reading loads. I have to say, I've mm. read tons of books. Um. Over the last two or three weeks, got got a couple of books for Christmas. Um, got some Christmas money, which I spent. There's been a sale on in the local comic shop, you know. Um, I had some Kickstarter books came through. I've been reading tons of stuff, and uh, nice. there's loads of books that I picked up at, at Thought Bubble, and that was ages ago. Oh, and totally. And I'm just I'm just plowing my way through it. So, um, but um, I, yeah, the the comic I was going to talk about today was actually one that I got for Christmas. My son got me this. Um, it is oh. Space Precinct Zero. And believe it or not, he picked this up at the um, at the at the kind of little market, small business market yeah. in the, in the shopping center. In that is a uh, Chris, um, Chris Sandler. Yeah, yeah, is is the writer um, of this yeah. um, um, with uh, Jason Santos on on art. Have you seen this? Have you read it? Or? 
No, but before doesn't... before before you talk about it, I do yeah. want to I do want to be like I know you hate it when I bring in the wrestling chat, right? Right. Okay. But um, <laughs> many moons ago, before actually when Claire was pregnant with Sunny, so we're talking about six and a half years ago, I was a trainee pro wrestler, and uh, when I was in, I was also at the same time a youth worker. Um, and one of my fellow youth workers was a young man called Chris Chandler. And me and him got on, and I found out that Chris Chandler used to be a pro wrestler in England. So I asked him if he wanted to come and join my wrestling company, and he did. And he was fucking quality, and he did two or three matches, and then he got injured and decided that he, he wanted to go back to what he was doing before, and he quit wrestling. And I've always been chatting to him, and then I knew that he had a comic coming up, but I hadn't been in touch with him for a couple of years. And then when you showed up with that on our Facebook chat, I was like, ah, oh, Chris's comic, that's well cool. <laughs> well, I, 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 never, I, I don't know Chris. Um, and and mm. it was my son had said, oh, there's a, a comics guy at the, at, you know, got a stall at the Christmas market. Um, I says, all right, tell me about it. And I went and Googled it and saw the book. Um, and I did think, oh, I'll pop down and get a copy of the book. And then for whatever reason, I didn't. But as it turned out, my son had bought me it for Christmas anyway. So uh, Space Precinct Zero, uh, here it is. I'm hoping to get Chris on in the future. I, I have been emailing him back and forth. I'm hoping he will join us really soon with, yeah, for, I hope so. when he's doing uh, issue believe, two. So I believe issue two is, is coming very soon. Mm -hmm. If it's not out already, then it's coming soon. In fact, I think I read that he was going to have a market at the, at the uh, a table at the market maybe next month. Um, maybe. So hopefully I'll be able to pick up number two from him then. Um, so let me tell you a wee bit about this, about um, Space Precinct Zero. So um, science fiction, um, it's... Um, I kind of have to tell you a bit about the story. So um, there's there's this um, sort of space station, which I'm kind of assuming is probably quite close to Earth. I have to say, I wasn't certain where the book was set, um, and it, it was more than halfway through the book, book before... In a tiny little caption here, it says Space Core HQ Earth. Because I wasn't sure yeah. if it was actually set around the Earth or, you know, somewhere else, or if it, maybe these weren't humans, they were aliens, I don't know. Anyway, I wasn't, wasn't certain. Um, but anyway, there's this this uh, space um, station, um, yeah. and um, it follows the story of um, a recruit, a new recruit to the Space um, Core um called Eme uh, Reisiger. Um here she is here. So here's Eme um drawn in a very sort of um, kind of manga type style. Um black and white art throughout. Um pretty decent art I'd say uh, uh, Jason Santos has done a good job on the artwork here. Um so we kind of follow her as she's kind of recruited in as her first day on the space station and we discover um, that her father um, is kind of high up in the military and he's trying to pull strings to make it easy for her, but she doesn't kind of want his help. However, um, despite being, you know, kind of an A-grade student, she's got lots of doubts about her abilities. Um, and then while she's kind of settling into the life in the space station, um, some alien craft is, is detected approaching the station so um one of the um i think one of the vessels is sent out to kind of approach it and see see what what the deal is um and um it comes under attack basically so um all the um the the space core um fighter craft are scrambled out to go and intercept it and to deal with it you know to, to obviously defend the space station and stuff um, I'm not going to go any further than that, other than to say, um, you know, the, 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 the space battles are, are beautifully depicted. I really like when the artwork goes goes black, but it's heavy on the inks here. Um, yeah. It's done a really good job there. Um, there's a kind of big double page spread. Oh, that's nice. That's battle. like a spread. Like. Um, so, um, and it does does end on a cliffhanger. So we're we're interested to know, you know, what what's happened, what's happening yeah. to Eme. As she is out there um, in space um, on her first kind of combat mission. Um, in terms of the aliens, we don't really know much about them. We see their spacecraft, and their spacecraft are roughly the same size as, as the humans' ones. So we're guessing that they might be 
kind of human like and the only hint we get is actually on the cover and we get this sort of you know very kind of traditional grey style alien um, yeah. here with the big eyes um, kind of lurking in the background there but that's the only picture of the of the aliens that, that we see um, in that's cool, film. I like that kind of faceless enemy thing though, that's quite um, when you're Hi. kind of creating that us and them dynamic, not being able yes. to see the antagonist is quite, is quite effective. That's so. right yeah, yeah, it's a kind of technique. Um, uh, what was that? Oh God, I've totally forgotten the name. Jaws. Jaws does it. <laughs> Jaws does it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was thinking the, of the uh, the Will Smith space thing. Independence. Oh, Day. Uh, Independence Day. It's quite a long yeah. t- time before you actually see the alien um, mm. in there. Um, so I think it's pretty competent. Um, uh, the 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 story is good. I mean. A lot of the kind of usual sort of sci-fi tropes, which you'd probably expect. Um, so I'm interested to see where it goes. You know, oh, cool. how 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 the, the deals with the the cliffhanger here, um, and you know how the, how this develops. But there's certainly a few things in there that look a bit interesting. There's um, a couple of panels here where it introduces a piece of technology yeah. called the oxygen generators, and I'm nice. wondering. I wonder, you know, why are these being introduced here? Are the, is this a hint of something that's going to crop up? Is going to be important later on? Maybe not. Maybe it's just, you know, to kind of show the sort oh, of the, yeah. the the science of, of the, the the time that the comic is set. Um, yeah, very enjoyable art style is, is rather cool. I think it will appeal to both kind of mainstream comic readers, but also maybe manga readers too. Yeah. Um, particularly with the style of the characters, um, so yeah, I'm, I thought it was, a, it was a good pick by my son. Um, yeah, and well done, Paul. To issue number well done, There we go. Amazing. Sounds good. Uh, I again, I've been reading quite a bit. I I was having issues with my. I've been reading a bit on Comic House, but I was having issues with my account. So I wanted to review something. I wanted to review something new. So I went to my old trusted space of. In the last couple of years, obviously, we um. We like to review stuff that folks send us in, and we have a we have a, a drive that's um, that's full of stuff like that. And I try and review as much as I can from that because it's really nice that folk get in touch with us and are, are quite open for us to see their stuff. But I read something that I really enjoyed this week. Uh, I'll see if I can get up. It was called. Uh, I was originally drawn by it's it's quite um, it's quite extreme title it's called Gangster Gangster Ass Barista. So I was like, oh okay, this 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 could be. Um, this could go either way, <laughs> um, but no, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I want me, give me a second. I'll get the I'll get the tab up so we can all see it. So gangster ass barista. Gangster ass barista. Uh, wow. Here we go. It's by it's Pat Shand. Uh, yeah, Pat Shand, Renzo Rodriguez, and Jim Campbell um, from Space Between. Uh, this is just the first chapter. So written and created by Pat Shand, illustrated by Renzo Rodriguez, and lettered and designed by Jim Campbell. Just a really, again, sort of black and white series about um, about a young woman growing up in New York and uh, having had a really quite crazy life um, that we don't know much about. But she works in a she works in a bar- she's a barista in a coffee bar. She doesn't really like her job, but um, I'm gonna give me a second, guys. I'm having a real issue with my microphone. It's really put me off. Can you give me two minutes to see if I can find our microphone? Yeah, don't don't it's sound that bad. Ear, it's really hurting. Oh, okay. you, you hear some? Yeah, yeah. It sounds okay. my voice back on me. Give me two seconds. Oh well, um, I don't know. I'll 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 cover for a couple of minutes. There's something else I read recently. Midwinter picked this up um at uh, Thought Bubble um earlier in the year um from uh, the writer Dan Whitehead. There's the um. There's the, the, the team on this, Dan Whitehead, a uh, well-known uh, indie comics writer. Uh, art in this is by PJ Holden, um, who is a, a current 2000 AD um, artist. Um, he does a whole bunch of other things. He's done stuff with Garth Ennis and battle, um, battle specials and stuff. PJ Holden, well-known uh, Irish uh, artist. Um, so uh, let me tell you a wee bit about Midwinter from what I can remember. Midwinter is actually based, the, the comic book is based on this old uh, Commodore Amiga game called Midwinter, which I don't know. I don't know anything about the video game at all. But uh, this is something that, that Dan has done before. He's, he's taken uh, inspiration from video games. Um, and he actually has a, a, I'm trying to remember what his other video game, Hex Loader. 
is, is, is a fairly recent book of his, Hex Loader. And it comes with its own Spectrum video game, old retro style, kind of, if I seem to remember right, it's a kind of platformer video game. Um, so, yeah, he's based this uh, comic book on this uh, old, I guess, 90s, it would be Commodore Amiga um, video game, uh, set sometime in the future. Um, and there, there has been a, um, a global catastrophe where an asteroid hits the Earth, uh, causes a kind of global winter, um, which destroys a lot of the, the Earth's uh, um, you know, inhabitants and animals and plants, etc. Um, but there are a few places dotted around the world, you know, isolated kind of camps and, and, and towns, yeah, um, and including this, this, uh, this little village here. Um, and there's, there's a community and they're living, you know, reasonably well, despite it being terribly cold, you know, they have to go out hunting to, to uh, you know, make ends meet sort of thing. Um, and there's a bit of a kind of um, family drama here between uh, the two main protagonists that we see on the uh, the cover there. So we see um, from the cover here, we've got these two people here with hunting rifles, you know, dressed in kind of, you know, warm clothing. Yeah. We also get these, um, yeah, they look like hunters, but we also get these sort of futuristic kind of soldiers. Um, and what happens basically is their um, their peaceful little town um, comes under attack from these kind of futuristic soldiers. We don't really know where they've come from. We don't really know too much about them. Um, and that pretty much takes us up to the end of this this first chapter of Midwinter. But, um, it's a lovely I, cover. See, um, yeah, the first thing cover, you grabbed me when you, is reminiscent it's of... Who, the, who is the cover artist? Steve Pugh. Well, okay, so we would expect that to be good. Steve mm -hmm. Pugh. Um, oh, it, well, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. it, it, reminds me, it reminds me of um, sort of old school, the sort of 70s, 80s pulp stuff. And, um, but, uh, yeah. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, it's got a kind of movie poster feel. Yeah, totally. Um, as well. So, yeah, a, a nice way to read. Qu a quick read up to say, fairly short comic. Um, I, I don't know if there's any... You know, further issues out yet, but anyway, like I say, I picked this up at Thought Bubble, and it's one that I just read a week or two ago. So, that's cool, anyway, man. thank you for that, man. Um, that's so much better. What was happening was I was I was I was hearing your review, and it just towards halfway through your 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 review about Chris Chandler, Chris Chandler's Space Precinct Zero book, it was like I could hear you talking to me twice, so I had to keep muting my mic. Mm -hmm. And then when I tried to do my review, I was like, I can't hear myself over myself. It's really annoying, and it was just playing around my brain. So I really appreciate you, Colin, for for saving my bacon and that. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll start my review again. If that's all right, it's like I don't think I said too much, but whether it be coming. So yes, uh, gangster uh, gangster ass barista is the name of the comic I read. Thinking it was um, thinking I don't know what I was expecting from this, but um, I just saw it in a list of file names. But yeah. A lovely cover, I've got to say. I really, really like it. Um, I think sometimes, uh, so the cover's by Renzo Rodriguez as well. I think sometimes in comics, uh, I don't know. Um, we, we talk about this quite a lot when we talk about like elevator pitches and stuff like that and about how like, you know you have to try and sell your comic really, really quickly. Um, but like a lot of the, like I, I know I kind of struggle with this, the kind of nuance or the, the subtlety and what you're, the story you're trying to tell can get lost in an elevator pitch. And I kind of thought about this with the title. I thought, oh, gangster ass barista, you know, it's going to be, I, I, I expected it not to be as deep as it was um, and was kind of blown away and really pleasantly surprised about the story of a young woman who is kind of hiding from her past. But because of her past, she's um, the, kind of the way her past has has formed her to this point. She's she's carrying this attitude. She's carrying this um, anger and this sort of thinly veiled power that she has. You know, she, you, there's the whole thing about there that um, you can see there um, in this panel here, which was one of my personal favourite. So where she's got a tip jar, but right next to her tip jar, she's got a, a sign that says, uh, she, she, one of the sort of running jokes at the start of the comic is that people keep asking for a regular coffee. And uh, her argument is regular coffee. Uh, the word regular in terms of coffee applies to the, the the bean, not the size of the cup. So when folk are like, I'd like a regular coffee, she's like, well, do you want that in small, medium or large? And they're like, no, just a regular. And she's like, regular is not a size. 
and that's kind of the you know and she gets annoyed and so by the end of it like in this panel here she's got this she's got this tip she's got this wee sign that on the table that says regular is not a fucking size and then she scribbled out break she scribbled out the f word and that's her a supervisor in the corner going did you uh, fix the sign and she's like yeah i fixed the sign <laughs> so, so it's just kind of joke but yeah um it's kind of like you can see from her tattoos and stuff like that as well. She 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 carries the um she carries this history that's kind of tucked away, but you know, she's lived a very angry and very violent and very competent lifestyle where she, you know, in the past where she's been very successful, and then all of a sudden she's been required to like deal with folks' crap in a in a cafe, a coffee shop. And I thought that was a really um interesting story dynamic. I like I kinda like the idea. We've seen stuff like what was the film with Jim Is it Jim Caviezel? I might have made that up where he's got like um, a history of violence. I don't know if it's Jim Caviezel. I might have made that up. But there's a film called a, a, a film called a history of violence about, a, it was based on a comic book about a guy who um, had a previous life as like a secret agent. And he was trying to like just live a normal life. And then things just kind of get, because of his like killer training, you can't just let the things like bar fights go, you know, in the, um, you know, he's actually he's, he's super violent because he's got a history of violence. It kind of reminded me of that where you know there's folk moaning about like how weak, you know, how cold coffees are or like how shit service is. And all she wants to do, she's got the ability to just like murder them <laughs> and she doesn't want to because obviously that would that would reveal who she is. And I just thought um I wasn't really expecting what we got. And it was a very strong, very strongly, you know, in terms of character development, a really strong character driven piece. Um and uh, yeah, it was Pat that sent that to us. I, I want to say like, far too long ago, so I apologise for getting it taking so long to get me to render and review it. But um, it has got me really excited. I'm gonna like pretty much um, one of my goals this weekend is to go and see if there's the next couple of parts. Which is again, I like, I don't know that the kind of the a lot of people don't check out issue ones because they don't want to get sucked into a story that hasn't been continued and that's the thing that's an issue with uh, indie comics in general but on the other side you've got like you need to check out the issue one to like for that to become a success so they can tell the next story but then you've also got like um um i know some people are quite reluctant to give issue ones a try as well so but getting a new series out there is really hard and um which is a shame because yeah, i think it's kind of what um Emma's was kind of talking about as well like you know it's, it's about it's about getting you know the the, the the strength of a story it can get lost and folk not giving it a go you know like and you know it's and she was saying there about uh, how um comics aren't about good art they're about good stories and um, obviously we we can be quite uh, we can be quite lucky in that we get we are we're often treated to both but um and this was a good example of it but I think people will not give things a go because they don't click you know, I, I, I've never known somebody that's gone. I've, ne I've never known somebody that's looked at a, a good comic. I don't. Know. I'm trying to form an argument here, and I can't quite get there. It's 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 it's, it's evading me, Colin. Slightly. Um, I've seen people that have not looked at comics because of the art, and they've gone, "I don't like that." But like, I've never known somebody that's been pulled into a story, and and been put off because of the art. Does that make sense? So like, um, obviously, yeah, I, I, I suppose that's probably the strength of a cover. Um, there was a discussion the other day on, I think it was the Battle Comic um, Facebook group, um, mm -hmm. and there, there's a there's a, a series on um, Netflix called The Liberator, and somebody had posted, um, you know, a screenshot of the TV show, um, and and you know, said something, you know, okay, it's not it's not Battle Comic, but it's it's war stuff. Um, has anybody watched this? And then there was a bit of debate, and there was some. You know, the Liberator is a four-part series. It's about World War Two, following a group of American soldiers through Sicily, Italy, into Germany. Um, yeah. A kind of band of brothers, but it's been done on a, a limited budget, and to make up for the limited budget, some of it is a lot of it is CGI, and it has a very cartoony kind of look. Not quite Sin City cartoon, but. Um, they've used a lot of lot of computer graphics in it and mm -hmm. i have to say when i first read watched it or started watching it i was like oh i'm not so sure about this but i stuck with it and the story is fantastic yeah. and anyway there was a debate about this on um the this battle comic page um on facebook the other day 
some folks saying, oh no, watched five minutes, couldn't stick with it. Um, other folks saying, oh, fantastic, you know, one of the best series, you know, yeah. you know, kind of true to life series and stuff. Um, and, and I posted because I'd seen it and I had the same feeling. I didn't like the look of it. I didn't like the style, the, you know, the visuals of it. But when I stuck with it, the story was great. Um, and the Liberator is, is effectively the, the guy who's in charge of this this platoon. Um, and he, he, he makes up a platoon of, um, you know, white Americans, black Americans, Mexicans and Indians, you know, right. and they'd normally they'd be separated. They'd normally be in platoons of their own. But he makes up this 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 group and they're all, they've all been put in prison for, you know, your know, military prison for sort of disobedience and stuff. Um, yeah. And he, and he and he 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 takes them out of prison and you know shapes them into shows them some respect which they've never had before, you know, from anybody in the military, um, and then builds them into this this amazing platoon. Anyway, so the story does actually suck you in really well if you yeah. just get over that hump. And I likened it on, when I posted about saying that I, I really enjoyed Liberator on the, on this Facebook group. I says it's a bit like when you pick up a comic and you do, you're not that keen on the artwork, but the story is really compelling, um, and you just have to put that artwork aside. And before you know it, you'll just be drawn into the story, you know, um, and and you you you'll forget about what the artwork looks like. I think if you, um, I I must add that the artwork in this book is fantastic. I can't even quite remember what the point I was trying to make that pulled us over to this dispute, but it's, it's a really um, it's a real. I think it's a really good one. We've talked about this before. I remember feeling sometimes that some of the artwork that I was getting put together for for my work wasn't kind of particular. Not so much the artwork, but more my colouring. And you know, I, I did. A, I do a lot of editing on the spare key and I think you'd said something along the lines of, you know, actually, if if the story is good enough, the art's just part of that journey. You know, it's the, the art's taking you from panel to panel, and if the story's strong enough, it, it you know, it's the story that holds it together. Yeah. So, um, well, um, you don't you don't actually spend that much time on a panel mm, when yeah. you're reading. You know, you read the text to get the story. Mm. Um, you you scan over the panel, you know, because there might be something in there that that's important. You yeah. know, it, something happens. You know that, that that you need to know, but um, don't dwell in the artwork too much, because mm. you know the story actually might be great. You know. Um, you, it's a shame you make, you make a good, you make, you, it's a great point though I always remember and they say like the thing about the budget one of my favourite TV shows in the world is uh, D D Doctor Who particularly classic Doctor yeah. Who and um, old sci-fi in general get, kind of gets a bad rep for like the effects being quite shaky yeah. and like I'm glad I've got this these, this headset in my head because one of my favourite stories in Doctor Who in particular is uh, Genesis of the Daleks and there's a really cool cliffhanger and it's based, it is purely sort of, I think, testament to the strength of the story, but particularly the strength of like the story that's been conveyed by Elizabeth Sladen and uh, Sladen, sorry, and, and Tom Baker. But there's a bit where, like, you know, it, when you think about modern Doctor Who, that's full of explosions and really quite realistic special effects. But this, there's one, there's one shot, and it's Tom Baker looking at the camera with this, with two bits of a wire, and basically, pure, based on pure story. And pure acting ability, he has convinced you that if he connects these two bits of wire, he will eradicate the Dalek race. And it's as epic and as powerful as um, seeing thousands of Dalek spaceships on modern Doctor Who blowing up planets. You know what I mean? It's really, really, um, and it's it's that it's the storytelling. Um, the storytelling in Gangster as Barrister um, is it, it reminiscent of stuff that I've read in like The Sopranos. And stuff I, I read about the Sopranos and how the storylines it's um developing developing strong characters and then letting you know once you've established the characters you can put them in situations and actually I think comics do this quite rarely actually and it's maybe something that comics struggle with Marvel and DC can pull it off quite easily because they've got decades and decades of of backstory but like what I really thought was cool about Gangster Ass Barrister is like by the end of issue one, there were situations emerging for the main characters. And because you got them and you understood who they were and you understood their motivations for where they were, when things started happening to them, it was it's quite good watching 
like almost being able, I understand that character well enough that you know what's going to happen. And I think that's quite good storytelling. If you if if you see a situation emerge and then you see your protagonist kind of just show up in that situation and you're excited because you want to see how her that character's motivations and characterizations will will deal with this situation. I think that's quite um I think that's quite I think that's quite um illustrative of a really good character arc and a really cool character development and that you're excited to see how somebody with those traits is able to deal with certain situations. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that, uh, I think that a Netflix series was it? <laughs> yeah, it is a recommendation. I think that Netflix series you're sending like, it's really good as well. And I it's the kind of stuff that just even based on your description, I would check that out and ignore effects. I think it's pretty yeah. cool. Um, yeah. What beer were you drinking tonight? I noticed that we um so okay. I, I could listen. I could listen to M. Mead. To honest, I'm not. I'm not going to recommend this beer. It's a hazy IPA from Micro Brew. Um, picked it up in um, what's that shop called? Uh, Home Bargains. Home Bargains. Uh, yeah. Well, one pound twenty, one pound thirty. Um, it's three point seven percent. It says juicy India Pale Ale. Is what it says on there. Tropical. I'm not really getting tropical. I'm getting a bit. To be honest, I think it's been sitting on the shelf too long. Um, I don't know if, what's the date on it. It's probably got a massively long date. Yeah, well, it says April this year. I reckon it's maybe been sitting on the shelf. I don't know. It's it's really bland, watery, poor, poor beer. I would guess. I mean, I've got a, I've got like, the beer that I'm drinking. I really enjoy this beer. Um, for for anyone that wants to drink Punk IPA, but isn't isn't totally loving sort of the ethics or or what you've heard about the ethics of Brewdog, um. We have a really good alternative brewed in Scotland and the establishment IPA from um you can buy it from Aldi. It's there, you know, and obviously we've talked about it on the show before about how um Brewdog and Aldi were maybe in sort of sort of contest with each other. But just what you're saying about the day there, Colin, sorry. Um this the best before in this is the fourth so it's April 2023. So I think it's maybe it would maybe suggest to you that if, if you've just bought that off a shelf and the the the, the sell by date or the you the drink by date is April this year, it's probably been sitting there for. I mean, we I know we we've we've been we've talked to brewers in the past. I've said like they they tend to put their best before date a year to the day it was brewed. They'll just go all right. So it's October. No, I brewed this in October twenty twenty. So I'm going to make October twenty twenty one the use but the best before date. So I've got, I'm, I'm drinking a beer here that has got a, a best before of a year and a half ish. So yeah. that would suggest the, that you've the had thing at is least the, a year. The, the, the hops will fade mm-hmm. before then, and the hops are, are what provides a lot of the flavour, eh? especially in something that, like this. It's meant to be a sort of tropical IPA. You'd be expecting, you know, pineapple, mm-hmm. you know, citrusy, grapefruity flavours in there. And I'm not getting that at all. It's really wishy washy. Um, so maybe you know if it was two weeks old, it'd be okay. But that's um, I find I find it quite fat. Beers, yeah, good. maybe. I think beers fascinating like that. Anyway, obviously we had um I always just remember we had speech bubble made last November, um for a for Scottish Comic Book Day, and um I I've been drinking that fairly. I, you know I've got I bought loads of it, and I, I've been drinking it fairly regularly. It's a different beer. It's still an amazing beer. It's a beer I'm really loving drinking. But there's certain qualities in the beer now that weren't there in November, and then there's certain qualities from the beer that we drank in November. It's the same beer, obviously. It, it's 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 from the same pour. It's from it, you know it's the cans were the cans were canned at the same time. But beer changes even within the can. You know within the keg, we we I've noticed it most in the keg when like imagine the beer that you drink on the Sunday of a three day beer festival was different than the beer that. The punters, the, the punters that were there on the Friday night were drinking, even though it came out of the exact same cask. Um, but yeah, it's probably most noticeable in off the shelf home bargain numbers. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, um, yeah, I'm drinking that anti establishment stuff. It's just really good. Like one seventy nine a can, four hundred and forty milliliter cans. You know, you can, that's probably the best. I think probably one of the best India Pale Ales you can get for that price. It's really it's it's full of flavour, yeah, but it tends to be really fle- fresh because it sells so much that you know out there you get them on the shelves and get them off the shelves quite quickly. So I would totally recommend anybody. We were talking a bit about like gateway beers and stuff with them, and that I totally um 
I would totally recommend grabbing an anti-establishment, particularly like a pizza or something. Just it's just a good it's a good beer to have just to dig into. And it's like five point six percent. So you could probably only you know, three would probably be enough for me. But <laughs> um it's pretty awesome. Uh, was there anything else you want to talk about? And then I can talk about our guest next week. Did you have any? Um, well, I don't know. What, what is there? What is there coming up? Um, well, obviously, um, news that um, you know a lot of the coronavirus um, restrictions have been lifted for um, events and things. So um, it looks like you know that's kind of good news for things like Comic Cons starting again. We've got Dundee Comic Con first weekend and for Saturday, I think it is. Um, February, so it's only what like two, three weeks away. Yeah, um, that makes sense. I'm, I'm hoping to go along to that one. Um, and then uh, I'm going, I'll drop, I'll give you a lift. I'm taking the boys, so I'll give you a lift. I want to go there, super yeah. duper. Um, and then a month later, we've got Acme Comic Con in mm -hmm. Glasgow. Um, so the big event, in I think it's in two halls of the. SEC, so um, yeah, that's great. And we, we 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 talked a wee bit about that last week and about how there hadn't been. We were excited, but we hadn't heard much. But it seems to be obviously, like you were saying yesterday, we had the big announcement that indoor events are going to be okay. And yeah. I imagine that's what Acme was waiting on. So yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll start to see um, guests and things getting um, that's um, coming out for that. Um, what else is is coming up? Is the Commando and British Comics. Swap meet in market in Glasgow. Um, <laughs> that's the twenty. I'm buzzing for that. I'm probably buzzing more for even though we're going to do a whole weekend in Acme. I'm actually really buzzing about that because but, that was yeah, a really so, special convention for me. Twenty sixth of March. Yeah. Um. So yeah, because that was the last event we went to before lockdown. Literally days before, three or four days before, we were locked down. Um. In, oh God, what year was that? Twenty twenty. <laughs> I, I I remember being in the car. I, obviously, I went to see you, and I had a feeling, and I, I tried to keep make precautions because I knew things were a bit odd. So, like, I had I had a bag of antibacterial wipes that I had in my car for. I took Sonny, my youngest, to the park straight after I went to see you, but I knew, like, I think a lot of us were, you know, without trying to take the precautions that we needed to, but knowing that, like, the world was going to change really quickly, and even driving to see you. I had a, I always listen on a Saturday. I like to take my boys out for a drive, and I always put on Radio Scotland, um, to hear about like the Scottish football and stuff like that. And all the games were being cancelled as I was driving. Mm. And I was like, oh man, this is getting pretty scary pretty quickly. <laughs> and so that was like the last nice comic really a day in a long time was that one. So I'm excited that this one's coming back in a, in March. Um, it's a really good event, and then particularly if you like your British comics, you should definitely. Yeah, go. if you into collecting comics, want to pick up some some cheap, you know, copies of two thousand AD Battle Warlord, pick up an old annual, um, yeah. and, and loads of other bizarre stuff that you've probably never seen before. Um, that's it's, we'll give you details closer at the time, but that's yeah. coming on the twenty sixth of oh, March. Like that, that started my two thousand AD collection. Was that event? It was so good. Like it was, it was so good. I'm really, really excited. Small but awesome. And actually, yeah, um, Sunday had a really nice day that day. I remember you, me, and Sunday sitting having like hard bacon rolls and just having a total chill out afternoon. Yeah. It was nice. It's a lovely, a lovely day. Um, what else is coming up? Um, loads of like loads of wee events. I've noticed. Um, like there's conventions happening all over the places now. Obviously, the big Glasgow Comic Page. They've got an, they've got an event every weekend in Scotland. Um, I've noticed there's more and more um, sort of northeast England, northwest England. There's more conventions being announced all the time. So, I imagine that's happening all over the UK and all over the world. So, you should totally check it out because I know in Scotland that the the government announced that in England they're hoping to lift most restrictions by 26th of March ish. I think so. Hopefully, like you know, hopefully that's that that's the right thing to do. And it, when it, as it happens, it opens up more things as well. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, totally, totally excited. Uh, talk about events and stuff like we obviously we went to Thought Bubble last year, and um, it was like one of my favorite weekends ever related to comics. But um, we also we one of my favorite moments was I I got a row we got a row from next week's guest for not having them on the podcast before now, um, which is quite funny in itself. Like somebody that knows us and is like, oh yeah, why am I not in your podcast? So like, but. When that person that's giving you a row uh, has some of the most like amazing like so we're talking about uh, 
I'm trying to think. I don't even know how to announce this lady because she's just she's probably one of the funniest, coolest people I know, um, or I'm aware of. Because I, I, I know you I, spoke to her a few. T- I know you spoke I, to her I, a few I, times. The only person that that will probably ever be on a show that has written an opera. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I, I'm. One of my favourite things is uh, trying to decipher Wikipedia pages. We've only had a few guests on the podcast who actually have Wikipedia pages. But, um, uh, yeah, she's a novelist, a um, graphic novelist for Scholastic DC Comics, Roaring Press Comics, um, a writer of the graphic novel The Plain Jeans, which is a, a Batgirl. What else has she done? On? I can't even. There's so much stuff. Yeah. Obviously, her, her, you know, it's not often that we get a comic. Well, it is often because everyone has in, it has different it has their has their um it visits loads of different takes part in different worlds as you say we've got a we're gonna our guest next week is going to be somebody that writes comics writes operas writes novels um is a is a and according to our uh, wikipedia page is an indie is an indie rocker but when i'm looking oh, at yeah, you back right. girl. i forgot yeah she, she had a band um um whose name i've forgotten but I do know that little shoppy heroes have a have the record and occasionally play it. Um, mm. Now, what else has she done? Um, she's also yeah. a massive Star Wars fan. Oh, of course, yeah, she's she's done stuff on Star Wars, isn't she? She's written so, much so that she she regularly appeared on TV when the Phantom Menace was coming out because she was camped out in the queue um, in the states to see it. <laughs> Just uh, so I've got I've got I'm. I'm uh, Trying so to, who is this she's mysterious? so, she's so, she's so, um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, we've got Cecil Castellucci on next week. Um, I'm just, I should have just gone to our own Facebook, uh, our own website about it. But yeah, she is an award winning and New York Times best selling author of books and graphic novels for young adults, including Change, The Changing Shade, The Changing Girl, Boyproof, The Plain Janes, Soupy Leaves Home, The Year of the Beast, Tin Star, Female Furies, and Old Duck. She's co-authored Star Wars Moving Target, A Princess Leia Adventure, and she's also written Batgirl for DC Comics. And she loves beer. And she loves beer. And that, as I say, she gave us a row at uh, she gives a row at Thought Bubble for 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 being like, she's like, you're a beer and comics podcast. I'm a beer and podcast lady. I'm, I'm, not, I'm a beer and comics lady. Why have I not been in your podcast? It's like, actually, I, I, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. I, I don't even. I've not even met you. I'm, I'm, you know, Colin knows who you are. I know of you because you're a legend, but I didn't expect you to be giving me a row. <laughs> it's like, so sorry, so sorry, season. We'll get you on next week. We'll get you on next year. I promise. I promise. So, yeah, she's joining us next year. Uh, next, well, next year. Next year's now, and she's joining us next week. So, um, yeah, that'll be good fun. Thank you to M for joining us this week. Uh, Hi, superb. Yeah, great to hear from her. Um, so, M, sir, please check out at Pints and Panels on all social media. And we'll, uh, Colin, thank you so much for A, joining me this week, but B, covering for me when my, uh, this is so much better. I'm just going to do this every week now. Um, but um, yeah, see you all next week. Colin, I'll see you on Sunday in the pub. <laughs> Hi, yeah, let's do that. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, guys. <laughs>